All right, let's take a moment in this exercise to try to combine the last two. So we'll see if we can take a kind of ordered, distorted set of lines like we just saw uh, and instead control their distortion using a um, attractor point again. Just as a way to kind of bring the two topics together, but this will also show a way of, you know, a, a flattening a list uh, or flattening a data tree into a list and then putting it back together back into a data tree later. Essentially to take some of the organization out in order to affect it with the, the tractor point and then put it back by repartitioning that data um, into a set that could be uh, used to draw lines. All right, so uh, if you're starting, we don't have to delete what we have before. I'm just gonna rebuild it, but you probably already have, if you're working uh, step by step, but you probably already have a rectilinear grid here, so I'll just kind of rebuild one. Um, if you want to rebuild one, that's cool as well. And I guess in this case, I'll just make it uh, I don't know, a little bit bigger, maybe in the last time, just to go back to 35. All right. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just draw in a tractor point, Rhino, like before. And let's put that into Grasshopper, right? So we're just gonna set that point. And then remember to, uh, it's always good to internalize the data. It's nice. And then uh, I don't really need that anymore uh, because this allows me to kind of move it around and update it in Grasshopper. Uh, and when I resave the file, I don't have to worry about saving the Rhino file for such a small little bit of uh, data. So that's easy. Um, let's go ahead and go to back to vector, right? And we'll grab the pole point component like we did before. Uh, in this case, I will go ahead and just get a start on flattening that information. And we'll, we'll talk about the difference in just a moment. Uh, so these are going to be the points. And we're going to pull all that to that tractor point there, right? And I'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, and just to keep something up on screen, we'll just take a look at those points for a bit before we start moving them around, I guess. Uh, now to control this 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 uh, stuff that's coming out of here, uh, we'll use a different technique just to introduce again another way of using the um, the remapping. Before we used a kind of just a simple division and we set a maximum value. This time we'll use a, uh, we'll actually use the remapping to do that. So we'll go to math, uh, remap numbers down here in the domain box. Um, one thing we do need to find out is the bounds of this. So we can go to domain again, find the bounds that's the third component down. That'll tell us our max and min, and that goes into the S input there. Um, and the values themselves will go into, into there, to B. And then uh, here's where we can kind of kind of remap these into a, a reasonable number um, so that we're not, so that we have more control, basically. Okay, so let's just go ahead and construct a domain. Um, and this time I'm going to use a slider. So I'll go ahead and double click and I'll just type in zero uh, less than, uh, let's say 5.00 and hit enter. And then I'm going to plug that into both A and B. And this is just a kind of quick way to give you a kind of negative positive. Uh, then we can right click on A, set an expression here to negative X, so minus X, All right? Um, now, if I increase this number here, you can see that I have negative 1.57 to 1.57. So that'll give me a range of values that'll kind of like go in both directions when we end up using this to affect distort our, our grid again. Um, this time, you know, having some some control over the effect that this this point has on the grid by setting setting this target domain as such. Oops. Go ahead and input that. Okay. So now we just need to, uh, again, we have to tell the computer, you know, what direction we want to move these points in. So uh, we need a vector for that. So let's go to vector tab. We'll grab that two point vector once again. We'll, the, the B input, the second input would be the points. And the first input um, could be the attractor. We can reverse this as well to check out the effect. And, um, yeah, so this order actually doesn't really matter. We can always change it later. And now what we want to do is set a, um, we want 
these values to control this vector. So we need a component to, to basically give these vectors some strength that's re related or some magnitude that's related to these numbers. So we can just stay in the vector tab here and go over to the vector box and find the amplitude component. And those, um, these are basically the, the values that are going to be converted to amplitudes and then these are the vectors that it's going to be applied to. Um, and let's go ahead now and see what happens. Uh, we can turn these off and let's turn these off because we're about to see them again in a moment. We'll go over to transform, grab a move. What we're moving is the points and the vectors go through here. Okay, let's see what this gives us. Um, I'm going to grab that point. Looks like we got a little distortion happening already. It's kind of cool. All right, so it looks like it's kind of being attracted to it and it's sort of um, imploding on itself. All right, so we've got something happening here. It's kind of interesting. Um, it's not really all that useful for drawing lines because of the implosion, right? The points start to make a little bit of a mess here. So actually what we want is the opposite. We want to kind of push the points out for this exercise instead of bring them toward. Um, so remember what we did with these directions. You might be able to swap these. The other thing you can do though is simply um, go back over to vector and you can just reverse it. So we can find the reverse vector component here in the vector box and go ahead and reverse that. All right, let's move that point back and forth now and see what we get. Okay, yeah, so now we have these kind of points just sort of dancing around this thing almost like it's uh, repelling. And uh, if we increase this value, we'll be increasing the effect that it has on the grid, right? The kind of power that it has and its kind of sphere of influence uh, as it appears as such, although it's a little bit different than that. Um, now the interesting thing that we should note here is that these points that we have currently on screen here, they look like they don't have much of an organization. That's because we flattened it. You know, it's, it's acting like a whole set. Um, let's take a look at what happens if we don't flatten it. We still get an effect out of it, which might be useful for us. But you can see it's affecting one line at a time. That might be what you want. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's kind of nice either way. Let's say it's not. We'll go back to thinking about what happens if it is. Um, let's say it's not. Let's say we actually want, you know, let's go find that again. Let's say we want something a little bit more, you know, again, rectilinear, something that has an overall area that seems to be a little more related to where we started, um, has a different effect, you know. Um, what's interesting is that even though that this is not flattened, the order of the points is, is the same. So what we can do, you know, if we know how many points we have in one direction, um, because this is set up for us, and then we can use this value again to what's called partition this list back into a data structure um, that's similar to how it started. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And partitioning is a nice, uh, really nice little technique that I actually end up using pretty often. Um, so we'll go over to sets and list. You will find partition list here on the right. Um, now the number that we need to set here is actually this value plus one. So um, because we're getting into the habit of setting small expressions, I'm just going to go plug them to S, right click on it, and go ahead and set the X plus one uh, there. Um, because remember that the output of this is actually, um, okay, let's go just kind of flatten that out, just or put that back again. You can see that we've got 36 points on each one of those lists, even though this, this number reads 35. And again, that's that zero indexing that I was uh, talking about in the first exercise for this set. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're, we're accommodating that number of things in here, because otherwise we're going to get a remainder, which will throw us off a bit. Any questions on that, just go ahead and feel free to ask. Um, what we're partitioning, of course, is the points, so we can drop those in. And by default, that's turned off. Um, but you can see that the, the data structure now has gone from basically 1,296 points that's in a single list. Uh, now it's got the same number of points, uh, but those, those points are now organized into 36 different rows um, or columns, and each one of them has 36 points on it. Uh, within, I should say, probably. Let's draw against that, right? So let's go to curve, spline, and interpolate. Let's just go ahead and plug that right in. And let's turn off some stuff here so we can see it, okay? Um, so now we've got a point 
uh, controlling a bunch of lines instead of the grid. Right? The grid was really just a means to this end. And we get these kind of nice flow lines that kind of you know avoid, if you will, the and we can we're gonna clean up this result in the end here. This is just the start. Um, to give you an idea. Let's keep this kind of there for now and we'll keep going. Um, if we want, the other reason why this is kind of useful is to work in, you know, again, data trees, that we can actually flip this to draw lines in the other direction. So let's go over to set tree and flip matrix. So let's flip this matrix, which actually is going to, because we're, because our, our grid is actually set up, you know, to have the same number in X and Y, that's going to look, it's going to look the same in terms of its structure, but actually it's reorganized so that we're now drawing the, the, uh, the rows instead of the columns. So let's, let's copy that component there and redraw. And you can see now that we're drawing lines in the other direction, which is kind of nice. So we're kind of now distorting a full grid, um, starting with you know changing the points in their locations and then redrawing the grid from there. And then um, to clean this up a little bit, sometimes I like to, you can either rebuild it, you can use the rebuild component. Um, the other thing I'll do though is just kind of introduce how to divide curves and then use those points instead to redraw a set of NURBS curves. Um, just as a way to kind of talk through how we can kind of make this have a little bit more of a smooth appearance. Again, there's multiple ways to do this. You can you probably find different versions of it all over the web. Uh, so I'm going to go to Curve, Division, and Divide Curve. And I'm going to divide each one of these just, you know, by default, I guess, just 10 times. Uh, you can change this, and I say 10 because by default n equals 10 in the component, but you can change that number, and you'll probably affect uh, ever so slightly the, the outcome of the next step here. I'm going to turn these off, I'm going to turn those off too, and then I'm just going to instead, this time I'll go over to Curve and Spline, and I'll grab a NURBS curve, which is going to draw them a little differently. And those are a little smoother, right? So now if I turn these both on, you can sort of see the red ones is where we started, and the green ones is where we're at now. So it's a little smoother, you know, so I find the result to be a little more elegant. We can go ahead and copy paste that, and just turn that one off. And now we have a, um, a grid distortion that has a better appearance, at least in my opinion. You can also change the degree here if you like. So if you wanted to see even it a little bit more smooth, we can maybe put a degree of four in here. Um, and that'll kind of, you know, again, make very, very subtle adjustments. Um, in any case, we can explore those, those commands a little bit later. And then we move these around and we get a pretty nice effect overall. We're not seeing any weird kind of kinking that was happening before. Um, so rebuilding the curves, and this should kind of take us a little bit back to last semester when we talked about the boat modeling exercises, uh, and the importance of understanding the quality of curves and so on. Um, let's take another quick look at, so this is uh, what happens if we kind of repartition, and if this is the result we wanted. We can turn this stuff off, and, and what I'll do is actually I will um, I'll right click, or I'll, I'll kind of wheel click on this using the wheel, the scroll wheel, and I'll disable that. Oh, that's weird. That didn't work. Uh, uh, anyway, you can right click on it and uh, disable it. And that's just going to kind of turn that component from collecting any data so that we're not redrawing things actually we don't need when we make changes. Sometimes that's also nice. Um, I'll turn these points on just for a second. And then I'll just go back and unflatten this to keep its data structure. And we don't need to do the partitioning now. The data is already in the right organization to draw lines. Um, so really all we need to do is kind of take. Um, we can just take and copy all this over to kind of just take a look at the two different results here. And this should be all right. And it looks like these, for whatever reason, were actually the ones that we disabled. So I'll re-enable those and take a look. And now we're just drawing, uh, again, the curves in the same way using this time the default data tree. And uh, we can move our stuff around here that effect instead, which is a bit more controlled, I guess, you can put it that way. Um, a little more bound, you know, within the lines themselves as opposed to the whole set. So you're seeing a little less overall effect in the corners until you get up close to them. So it's pretty interesting, um, you know, kind of, uh, I think, sample for, you know, the little bit of the difference between using a tree versus using a flat list. In this case, the consequences are low. Uh, they both sort of produce you know, a result that you can, you can determine to be successful. Um, oops. 
So in this case, we flatten without the partitioning, and now what we had here sort of breaks down. Um, so this process really only works, of course, when the data is properly set. Um, so what we'll just do is sort of disconnect this for now and leave it there as a as an option. Re-enable this and turn that back on. Again, you know, just to kind of have a solution space that we're that we're exploring. Okay, enough on this for now. Um, so this kind of brings the some of the things that we looked at in the last one together with the first uh, week exercise, which was really kind of using attractor points to you know affect a field. And instead of drawing multiple separate objects, this time we're actually distorting uh, what we can describe, I guess, as a single entity, which is the grid here, this kind of like distorted curve grid, um, as opposed to separate circles that exist along each point. So we're we're looking at the way. Um, the default data tree allows us, or the repartition data tree allows us to draw curves that are separate from one another um, and parallel to one another in two directions. Okay, we'll move on to part three.